Welcome to my latest video blog. Today I'm really excited. This is a first for me. Normally, when I create a video blog, it is an idea that I've been working on for a while, something I've written about, or something that comes from um, um, an article or a session or many sessions. And, and I play around with it for a while and eventually it, it articulates in my mind. But today, during a session with a client whom I will call Richard, um, and I thank you, Richard, for this, um, I had a wonderful um, epiphany of sorts about a technique that I've used for quite a while. The technique um, that I'm referring to is the observe, don't absorb technique, which, by the way, is one of, more, is one of my more popular videos on YouTube, and um, I suggest that you watch that video before this one. But the point of the original um, Observe, Don't Absorb um, video, or the technique, was to understand that when you fight, or you argue, or you, uh, you try to counter the manipulative, um, um, the, the manipulative uh, strategies or manipulative actions of, of narcissists, you end up in the middle of that ring and you almost always lose because you're fighting with someone who's much better, much more skillful uh, than you are in the art of emotional manipulation. But today I want to talk to you about the situation is if you have a child um, or a brother or a sister or for that matter anyone, a sibling, well brother or sister of course, and, and let's say we know, and let's say you know they're narcissistic and you have compassion for them because you understand they you know, are a product of their environment. A good illustration is a, is a sister whom you love dearly who was, um, because of the way she was treated in her own family by your parents, um, um, grew up to have some pretty difficult and psychological problems for which she does not have knowledge or, or um, insight into. We as adults can choose to love and forgive these people um, while we set boundaries so they don't hurt us. So if, say, this sister um, um, always talks about herself, always um, is, pass, uh, is frequently passive-aggressive in her, her treatment of you, and she does have one form of pathological narcissism. The odds are that she does not really know what she's doing and does not have judgment in how much she's hurting your feelings and making you feel bad. So in these cases, use ODA as a demonstration of love and compassion. Disconnect. Allow that person to behave as they are but do not participate in the relationship dynamic. So just like the pathological narcissist I talked about in videos before, disconnect, use the various methods and techniques that um, I talked about in my, actually my second ODA video, and don't let them get you upset. Because when you can observe the person who's trying to hurt you and not absorb it, then they can't make you feel angry and resentful and bitter, which are the emotions that draw you in. So back, back to the sister. Um, the sister who always talks about herself and is passive aggressive and manipulative, um, or for example, um, um, your neighbor. Um, the sister who is, who is unintentionally but certainly narcissistic, um, you can choose to accept her and love her. So when you observe, you are watching your sister um, hurt you and not have knowledge of hurting you. And because you want to keep the relationship, because you don't want to separate yourself from this relationship, and this is a conscious choice, and everyone has the right to make those choices. Narcissists aren't necessarily bad, they're only bad or harmful, in my opinion, if you bring them into your life and you let them hurt you and, um, and victimize you. But when you observe and don't absorb these people to whom you want to be compassionate, you are not letting in the toxins, the observing, the anger and the resentment. For example, the sister not listening to you. She cuts you off. She always makes a relationship about you. Um, you can choose to not be upset about it. And observing it means in your mind, you're telling yourself, I am watching a narcissist. I am watching a narcissist who I love and I choose to love, who has no idea they're behaving this way. You can't choose in your mind 
to be compassionate and watch that person behave in a way that they don't really know what they're doing. By observing and not absorbing, and absorbing would be, you know, gosh, dang it, or damn it, she's not listening to me. Why is it always about her? Or, you know, I spent my whole life, blah, 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 and, and just getting mad. And then, of course, behaving um, in a way that makes the narcissist think badly of you. And, of course, proving to them that they're the good one and you're the bad one, which is their self-fulfilling prophecy, that how can I be bad if Ross is always upset and acting irrational? It must be him. But when I observe, and I don't absorb, and I love and have compassion for this narcissist, then what I am doing is I am demonstrating unconditional love. And something miraculous happens. Is the narcissist actually feels better and is closer to you, and you, the recovering codependent, or whomever is using this technique, feels closer to them. And why? is because the observe, don't absorb technique used with people you love creates a dynamic where you're not fighting a fight that you can't win and proving to the perpetrator of this fight that they're right about you, that there's something wrong, and that your complaints about them not listening and this, that, and the other is all BS. You are actually showing them that they're not, you're giving them reason to like themselves more. And, and when you make a narcissist like themselves more or not, or not threaten them, what you've done is you've made them feel closer to you. So there you have it. The observe, don't absorb technique with someone you love can bring you closer. Now, don't get me wrong, and let me be really clear about this. ODA is a very effective technique to use against narcissists who are harmful to you that will use their narcissism in a way to cause you harm physical, mental, emotional, verbal, any, any form of, of harm. And that protects you and keeps you safe. But to summarize today's video, is when you love that person and you want to have empathy for them. You know, I use this hypothetical, by the way, my sister's not narcissistic. She'll take care of anyone, and she is um, probably the most loving and compassionate person I know. So just in case <laughs> she watches this, it was a hypothetical sister. But, um, um, but if, you know, if you have a mother or a father who is narcissistic and you choose that, you know, they're in their 70s or 80s and, and you've come to that point of your life where you've come to understand that they're victims of their own past and you've had enough therapy, you know, like I have, and you just say, well, maybe it's time to just forget because, you know, by holding back and not connecting with them, um, at, at the end of the day, you lose more than you gain. So this is where ODA really comes in. It draws you closer to the narcissist. It actually makes them feel good. You're not absorbing the, the narcissistic harm that, um, and you are connecting to them in a way that makes them um, love you more. And, and at the end of the day, you love them. Their narcissism doesn't change. You don't change. And the world is just a better world just because one relationship has less conflict. All right, guys, I hope you like this video. And, uh, and I want to say, um, and I'll be mentioning this uh, off and on in some videos, is I'm really excited about an upcoming training with Richard Grannon, who is Spartan Life Coach um, on YouTube. And we are talking about a collaboration um, during November in which uh, we will both be putting on a seminar together um, in London. So stay tuned. Um, if you want to uh, uh, learn more about that, just uh, email me at info at humanmagnetcenter.com. Info at humanmagnetcenter.com. Okay, be well, and we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.